Good news is it's not lashing it down here in Bristol. The bad news is our red 280SL 1983 just failed its MOT on four things. Front tyres, which we've just replaced. Um, incorrect nut on the top ball joint, which we're going to do first. Uh, handbrake not binding properly. So this video is going to be showing you how to adjust the handbrake on an old SL if you haven't done it before. The other thing it failed on was the rear fog lights not working. Let's start off with that top ball joint nut. I don't know how well this will come out on camera. I'm just under, upside down underneath the car. This is the nut that they picked up on the MOT. And they're basically saying it's uh, not done up tightly enough to reach the nylon locking part of the mechanism. <clears throat> the problem is, was when we replaced these um, upper control arms, one of them came without that nut. So we got that nut on eBay. Okay. And the only special thing about that nut, it has a fine thread. Um, but it's much taller than normal nuts. So we're going to take that off and replace it with another fine thread nut, which is smaller. So that's a nut there. We've just taken that off without having to do anything else other than unbolt it. And um, we've ordered a couple of these nuts from our new best friends, Aku. They've got a great website and allow you to search for specialist fittings really easily. So these are M12 fine pitch nuts, 1.25 din. So we're just going to whip one of those on and that should be that part of the MOT sorted. You can see that's the nut that came off the car. This is the one we're about to put on. You can see how that's just that much taller. We're just going to put that on my hand first. And you can see that the nylock is starting to bite well before it gets to the bottom there, which was the problem with the other nut. 19mm spanner to tighten that up. Okay, that's that lock, that nut done up. And you can see that the bolt is now coming out the top of it, the top of the control arm. Okay, we've swapped the nuts over. Those nuts should be torqued to a specific torque, which I'll drop in the comments or add to this video later, as I don't have it to hand at the moment. Okay, so rear fog lamp not working, we'll get to that. Parking brake inoperative on one side, offside rear, so that means the other side. So we'll just take the car out the garage, whip it round. Parking lever has excessive movement. Um, the movement of the parking meter, sorry, the handbrake, um, is actually regulated by a fitting underneath the car, underneath one of the plates. Not sure what to do about that. Front tires we've done, parking brake efficiency below requirements. So let's whip the car around, sort out that offside parking brake. What you're going to do is just loosen the wheel nuts whilst the car is still on the ground. We're going to use a breaker bar because these are torqued up to, I think, 120 or 100 Newton meters. Loosen the wheels off. Next, we're going to jack the car up. Now, personally, I never use the jacking points on these 107s because normally they're rotted out and you just can't see that. So we're just going to jack the car up using this rear mount here and then put it on blocks. So you start jacking the car up. Two bricks or bits of wood by the front tire so it can't move anywhere. Remember to take the handbrake off before you start trying to adjust the handbrake mechanism. When you're jacking these SLs, take the time to cut a little nick out of a piece of wood. Don't ever jack on that um, crimped edge there and then make sure you've got a jack and some blocks. Once you've got the car jacked up, I usually put the tire under the car like that, just in case something goes horribly wrong. You want to get this locking pin here at the top so it's vertical. If you need to get the caliper off for any reason, it's held on by two 19 mil bolts. Once you've got the caliper off, um, if the handbrake is off, this should just lift straight off. see that when I put this back together I think I put this on back to front because <laughs> those little cogs should line up with that hole when that's at 12 o'clock it's not a big um, problem it's just well, the reason why I couldn't adjust the brakes through that hole is because I couldn't find it so all I've got to remember is that on this side this is going to be at 12 o'clock so to adjust the handbrake, i.e. to make it stiffer, what you need to do is wind this down towards the ground and that basically expands these shoes and puts them slightly closer to the disc. We've adjusted the handbrake, all we have to do now is put the caliper back on and just test it, remembering that those caliper bolts need a little bit of thread lock on them. I'm just going to mark on there that when that edge of that is at 12 o'clock, the handbrake adjustment is straight through that hole there on this side of the car. A dab of blue thread lock on those caliper bolts and you should be good to go. If you remember when you're tightening these bolts up, you do them finger tight when the car's still up in the air and then let the car then down. Torque them up to 100 or 120 Newton meters in a cross-cross pattern. 
We're going to have a go today at figuring out why the fog light on this 1983 280S, 280SL is not working. Now, I must confess that the first car I ever had, which is that 280SL up there, it was many years before I actually realised there was a fog light on these cars. So for those of you who don't know that there is a fog light and how it works, just very quickly, two clicks to turn the light on, one click to turn the front fog lights on and two pull it out twice to turn the rear fog lights on and that light bulb should light up there's a light bulb missing in there now there could be any number of reasons why your fog lights not working if it has worked previously and suddenly it stops working the most likely thing is that you've got a bulb out or a dirty connection and it's very easy to test that and um, we've already done that test and that is not our problem this is the rear light unit here from the car and this here is the fog light. It lives just below the rear light car. This is a right-hand drive car. Fog light is on this side. The red project car we're doing over there, left-hand drive car, the fog light is on that side. And interestingly enough, if you take both fog light units out and you put them in this golden parts car here, both fog lights actually light up. So the lighting circuit in this car is still fully functioning. So the wiring is in place on these plugs here i believe for the fog lights to work on both sides but usually you just have a fog light on the driver's side of the car this bottom connection here it's marked number eight on this plug here is the fog light connection and you can very quickly test whether your light bulb is working either just by swapping the light bulbs there to the indicator and put the hazard lights on or you can just hold a nine volt battery across that terminal there and one of these earths here and you will see that that fog light either lights up or doesn't light up. That will tell you very quickly whether the light bulb was out and whether you've got any dirty connections. So we've just actually put this in our golden parts car and the unit itself works fine. If you're lucky, when you take the fuse box cover off your car, the inside of it will be a key to what all the fuses do. Now, on this particular car, there was no such key, so we printed one off on the internet and glued it on, but I'm not 100% sure that that is actually correct for this particular car. But according to this, fuse number 9 or fuse number 15 should be the fog lamp fuses. Now when we first got this car here, which had been sitting in a field for 5 or 10 years, one of the biggest problems we had was electrical problems. And the electrical problems all stem from dirty fuse contacts. So the very first thing I would do is change your fuses to proper copperhead torpedo fuses like that if you've got any electrical problems check the fuse first so the very first thing i want to test is whether this switch actually works. what you should see happen when you turn the lights on and pull that switch out twice you should see that one of those fuses either fuse number whatever it is on this car 9 or 15 will start off with zero voltage and as soon as you turn the lights on and pull it out twice you should see 12 volts across that so that's the first thing we're going to check if you're doing this by yourself it can be quite annoying when you turn the lights on with the door open and hear that buzzer going off so you can put the keys in the ignition and just turn them two clicks and that'll turn that buzzer off so the first thing we're going to do is test which of those fuses we've got the lights turned on and we're going to test the power across fuse number 9 and 15 and I'm expecting one of those two fuses to read zero. Now, to test the power across a fuse we're going to hold this on this screw here which is earthed to the car and we're going to take the red terminal and touch it on the bottom of fuse number 9. So with the black terminal held on that screw we are going one, three, five, seven, nine, and there is no voltage across fuse number 9. Let's test fuse number 15. When we touch that you can see that fuse 15 has power to it when we turn the lights on we've tested each one of these fuses first with the lights off then with the lights on then with the fog light pulled out once then with it pulled out twice fuse number nine which could potentially be a fog lamp has no power when the lights are off it has no power when the lights are on no power when the fog lights pulled once no power when the fog light is pulled twice Fuse number 15 has always got power as soon as the lights are on. What this tells me is that that switch is either faulty 
or it's not wired correctly. So that's problem number one, but that may not be all of the problem. Now, when we were testing the lights on this red project car we're doing here, it's a 1976 280SL, it took us ages to work out why the lights weren't working. And the reason they weren't working is because they were unplugged. And this big thick cable here runs from the back rear plugs all the way up all the way up to here and plugs into the firewall i don't know how well you can see that if you unplug that plug none of the rear lights what we're going to do is we're going to start taking the dash to pieces on the other car and we're going to make sure that this piece of wire is actually intact i had hoped that by taking the carpets out and all the lining i could actually get to that plug that re leads to the rear lights but no such luck so what i've got to do is actually take the steering wheel off take the instrument cluster out, take that bottom panel off. It's usually at about this time that most people would start giving up and giving this to an auto electrician, which I totally understand. But having put this car together many months ago, I'm pretty confident that everything's gonna come apart as expected. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Then we're gonna take the steering wheel front cover off, take the steering wheel off. That will allow us to get the instrument cluster out. That will allow us to get to this switch here and then we're going to take this panel here out seem to remember that was an absolute nightmare getting it in there still doesn't fit properly but so be it um, and that should allow us to get to the rear light plug which runs underneath this piece of trim battery disconnected next stage steering wheel the center section of the steering wheel should just pop straight off like so and then we just need a special tool to get that off Whenever you take the steering wheel off, remember to mark it, put the wheel straight before you start and do not take that steering wheel off before you mark it here. We mark a pen and there, so those two lines mark, line up. Depending how original your car is, this section of trim will be held on by a series of screws or bolts here. There's one here on this car, one here. There should be one there or a couple there as well. So we'll just whiz those out and that piece of trim should come straight down. Just remember which screws go where. These two are both the same. On this car, there's one 10 mil bolt. Gently let that down and you should be able to just take that rubber grommet out and unplug that light. Get these lights out, they're clipped in at the top. You just unclip it and then you should be able to feed it through that hole. Then you can just pull those spade connectors off that light. They, it doesn't matter which way around they go on. To give myself slightly better access, I'm going to take this trim piece here off. It's been off before so I know those screws will come out. That'll allow me to maybe get this fuse box cover out. And then I may take this trim piece here off as well. And that will allow me to pull that plug all the way out and test it properly. Now this car, that trim piece is held on by two screws, both of which are slightly different. The top screw's got a wash on it. Make a careful note as you take everything to pieces because you don't know how these long these jobs are going to go on for sometimes. And it's very easy to forget where things go. Next up, we're going to remove one, two, three, four screws. I think there's just four holding Next up, on. we're going to undo the two bolts holding this unit here onto this bracket because I can't get into that plug to get that plug off. It's held on by two bolts and two washers. We're getting ever deeper to dismantling the car. I've taken the two bolts on holding this bracket on because I cannot shift that plug. And I'm hoping that this will allow me to get the whole thing down, which that sort of does. Now that I've got that like that, I can get a screwdriver in here and start twisting just to separate that plug. Oh, finally, we've got that plug free. Now that we've got that plug out, what we're gonna do is just take our battery and we're gonna put the negative terminal on the car here and touch each one of these with the positive terminal and we should see each one of the rear lights, including the fog light, light up. Which one of those terminals is the fog light? So I'm just gonna touch them all and if the fog light lights up we know that the wiring is good you can see that when i put the negative on that screw and touch this terminal here the second one up from the bottom that light lights up once you've got the steering wheel off this should just pull out it's just held in with this rubber seal here this one's been out a few times before so it comes out relatively easy if you're really struggling to 
pull it out. You can take the speaker cover off, take the speaker out and push it out that way. You can get two special little metal tools that slot down the side. Um, but as I say, it should just pull out. Before you start undoing things, make a careful note of where everything goes. The blue wire on this particular car seems to be have an extra earth there. We've got that yellow and red wire over there. And then we've got the main plug here and a vacuum line. And that's about it on this car. We'll take this plug here out and that bulb. Take those two centre speedometer uh, cables out. And lastly, this plug here. You've got to be very careful when you take that plug out that it doesn't disintegrate. Once you've got that dash out of the way, you can get access to this plug here. So to get that switch out, we've got to take this off here like so, and then undo this nut here. Once you've got that nut off, that should just come off. And then you should have good access to the switch behind the switch here. It's got a rubber sheath over it here, which we're gonna to have to remove so we can see what's going on with the wires. We're gonna start taking this switch off and replacing it with a switch from the gold parts car. This is held on by little Phillips screws with a washer. Don't lose the washers and make a careful note of how that main red power unit screws on. On this car, someone's wired this extra blue wire to, I believe it's just to light up the dash lights here when you turn the lights on. I don't think that's standard. That screw's not coming out, so we'll get back to it. So the second inside wire, these are the two red wires at the top. The first inside wire was brown and the second one, that's the brown wire there, and the second one is this yellow, green and white wire here and that should be the uh, rear fog light. We're going to go ahead and take this switch off. We've taken all the outside wires off and marked them. This is the last wire to take off here under that NS is a grey white wire, the same what colour wire as here. This is the switch out of our parts car. It looks exactly the same as the switch that we've just taken out of this car. The difference being that this bit at the top here isn't broken and the bit where you push the light bulb in is still intact. So let's see if we can hook this switch up and see if our fog lights miraculously work. So I've wired in the switch from the parts car into here. Now the wiring on the parts car was different to the switch I've just taken out. Could that be why the fog lights didn't work? Um, so now let's connect the battery up um, and see if the lights work. Now I've just connected the positive terminal. If you've done that, make sure your boot is closed and your doors are closed and there are no lights on, otherwise you'll get a big spark when you connect this. So I've closed the boot on the door. We've tightened that nut up. Next, we're gonna put a little light bulb in there. Like so. Joined by my beautiful assistant. I want you to tell me, Grace, if the rear lights go on when I turn this switch up and twice. Just shout, yes. Yes. Okay, now do the fog lights go on? Do they get brighter? Oh. Yes. Do the fog lights work? Yes. And the bulb here works as well. That is job done. We just need to make that switch a little bit tighter. It's a little bit loose on there. And then we get the little light that lights up as well. So that's it, job done. Boy, was that a journey. All we've got to do now is put the whole car back together. Do you not want to know what the problem was? What? Do you want to know what the problem was? What? Someone had wired up the headlight switch wrong. I mean, you can't, you can't blame them. They probably just didn't have a Mercedes, didn't know what to do, and weren't as amazing yet fixing cars as you. <laughs> Thanks Grace, that rhymes. Just in case anybody ever has the same problem and needs to know how to rewire the light switch, there's a picture of it. So as you take this switch out and face it that way, you have the thick red wires here at the top, and then alongside the um, first terminal here where these wires are attached would be the brown wire that's on the inside there. And then you move quite a long way around until you get to this yellow and green wire, which is this one here.